you are not, if you put a generator, if you put it in your house, and this is a subject that's kind of near and dear today, if you put solar on your roof, the utility back before the 1900s was 1990s was not required to take that energy from you. You had no right to sell energy back into the grid. You had no right to sell to your neighbor. Matter of fact, today you can't sell to your neighbor in Florida because you are not a utility. You can't, I mean, there really are some restrictions on this. The exception came out in the 1970s, if you remember my earlier slide about the energy crisis. They did permit what's called combined heat and power, also called cogeneration, very efficient <coughs> process of um, producing stream and electricity at the same time. Those entities could sell into the market. And some of the companies that my company represents in Florida are what are called qualifying facilities. Um, <clears throat> trying to think of which ones here. Anyway, they make steam and they sell the steam to uh, Prax Air, which is compressing air, and they sell the electricity in the market. So, with that exception, nobody else could sell into the wholesale market. The world changed in 1992 because of the bad stories I told you before, the whoops, the bad investments in nuclear plants, the uh, energy crises, the, the, a lot of things happened. They said there's got to be a better way. Think back to my Thomas Sowell quote. Sure sounds good if we do something different. Number one is they opened up the transmission system. Prior to that time, you did not have the right to use the transmission system. So it's like the interstate system. You didn't have the right to use the interstate transmissions, uh, in the interstate system figuratively. If you wanted to sell oranges to somebody in South Carolina, you showed up at the border with Georgia, they were not required to let you move those. They would say, hold it right there. Why don't you take your oranges and put them in my truck? And I'm going to South Carolina and I'll sell them and I'll take the profit. That's how the transmission system works and I'm, I'm not making it up. <clears throat> so what happened in 1992, they passed the law, FERC, put forth rules to say anybody, ev everybody has the same equal access to the transmission system. And a lot of things were put in place to do it. Uh, so like right now, if you were to go build a generator, you have as much right and priority to use FP&L's transmission system as they do. Um, anyone could also own generation and sell. I told you other than that one little carve out for cogeneration plants, you weren't allowed to have a generator and just sell to other people. You can do that now. You could starting in the 1990s. It also encouraged the establishment of these organized markets, which I will talk about a lot, and maybe you have heard about, the RTOs and the ISOs. The word encourage is important. It was supposed to be mandated. Politically, that didn't go over. A lot of people adopted it. A lot of people didn't. <clears throat> um, so I think I've talked about some of this, the reasoning. People thought that uh, you know there was just too much risk from the consumers, people making bad mistakes. It was just to generally promote competition, make things cheaper. And I, I like to throw in my soapbox comment. It was because others just wanted to play in the sandbox. <clears throat> it is a multi-billion dollar industry that a lot of banks wanted a piece of. And what I saw at the very beginnings of the market, you could deny that that was going on. <clears throat> so before we go more, why don't we take a five minute break? Because I need to get some water. And then we'll keep going. Can we do that? Or I'll take a two minute break and you guys sit where you are. I don't care. <clears throat>